My name is Francesca Capon. I am a geneticist based at King's College London. And in the next 10 minutes or so, I'm hoping to convince you that uh, genetic studies have provided some very important insight into the etiology of postural form of psoriasis. So as you all know, postural form of psoriasis can present as generalized or localized uh, diseases, and I'm going to touch briefly on both. So I'm gonna start with generalized postural psoriasis, or GPP, and my group has been interested in this condition for almost 10 years now, and that started with the observation that a recessive mutation of the R36RN gene are found in a substantial proportion of affected individuals. And R36RN encodes R36RA, which is a soluble uh, molecule that antagonizes the pro-inflammatory action of R36 cytokines. So in normal circumstances, R36RA can bind the R36 receptor and uh, shut down downstream signal transduction. And uh, in the presence of a recessive uh, loss of function mutation in this gene, this break is released from the system and what you get is uncontrolled R36 signaling. And interestingly, uh, a few years uh, after that, uh, we uh, identified a further gene called AP1S3 with mutations associated with GPP. And what we found was that AP1S3 mutation could also upregulate R36 signaling, albeit through a different mechanism. So that really uh, showed us that, R30, uh, that GPP is a disease of excessive R36 activation. And having shown that, we uh, went on to investigate the effects of R36 in common plaque psoriasis. And this is work from Satya Mahil, who at the time was doing a, a PhD in my lab. And uh, what she did was that she identified a set of genes and pathways uh, that are upregulated by R36 in normal keratinocytes. Uh, so these are genes that are induced by R36 and keratinocytes. And uh, she then went on to demonstrate that the pathways that can be induced by R36 in keratinocytes uh, are overlap very significantly with the pathways that are overexpressed in black psoriasis, in the skin of patients with black psoriasis. And these are the two circles you can see uh, on the left end of the screen. And not only this overlap between R36-induced pathway and pathway upregulated in plaque psoriasis is statistically very significant, is also, it is also biologically meaningful as uh, the most enriched pathways, as you can see on the right, are those related to uh, the role of L17A in psoriasis and the extravasation of granulocytes and other leukocytes to sites of inflammation. So, uh, therefore, uh, R36 also plays a role in plaque psoriasis by amplifying IL-17 uh, signaling. Having shown that in skin, we were also interested in understanding what was going on at the systemic level. And uh, what we were able to show, to cut the long story short, is that in the neutrophils of GPP patients that have R36 RN mutation and upregulated R36 signaling, in these neutrophils, we can see very prominent activation of type 1 interferon genes. And we can also see that in the neutrophils of patients with, plaque, with severe plaque psoriasis, PSV in the uh, diagram in the screen, uh, compare to uh, control. And so we were able to show that at the systemic level, R36 promotes uh, interferon, uh, type 1 interferon activation in circulating neutrophils. So, uh, and these effects that of R36 that we demonstrated uh, in the skin and in the circulation are important because, as you know, R36 is now uh, um, a, a well-established uh, therapeutic target. And various uh, antibodies, R36 inhibitors, are now in clinical development. And these are the two that are uh, in a most advanced stage, spesolimab 
uh, is being developed by Beringer Ingelheim as shown a strong efficacy for the treatment of GPP in a phase two trial that was uh, published last year. And Anaptis Bio has just uh, very recently released the results of their uh, interim analysis of uh, their phase two trial of imcidilumab, which also uh, showed promising efficacy uh, at uh, in GPP patients at the time of analysis. So uh, genetics have actually uh, provided some important information here. The first thing we've learned is that GPP is a near monogenic disease in terms of genetic architecture. It is uh, caused, uh, as you can see in the little diagram at the bottom of the screen, by, um, um, by rare allele of strong uh, genetic effect, which can interact with some uh, environmental uh, trigger. And we've also learned that GPP is really a disease of upregulated R36 signaling. And uh, this uh, abnormal R36 activity uh, in the skin uh, has the effect of uh, promoting uh, L17 signaling and therefore maintaining uh, and propagating inflammation. And in the circulation, abnormal uh, R36 signaling promotes uh, type 1 interferon activation in neutrophils. And both uh, these effects can be reversed by uh, R36 uh, blockade. So what about palmar plantar pustulosis? Well, very uh, early genetic studies uh, told us that the genetic architecture of PPP seems quite different in that uh, mutation in genes uh, that are linked to generalized pustular psoriasis only uh, account for a very small percentage of PPP cases. And so to get uh, a better understanding of this disease, we initiated an important uh, patient recruitment drive. And in the UK, this was led by Catherine Smith, who is the lead uh, for the apricot uh, clinical trial and also established uh, a sister uh, mechanistic uh, study called PLUM uh, that has allowed us to recruit more than 200 patients across more than 20 recruiting center. And then, <clears throat> Uh, outside of the UK, we have with Alexander Navarini uh, from the University of Basel uh, set up uh, a RASPEN, which is uh, a European and now uh, international um, initiative for uh, patient ascertainment and uh, phenotyping. So the analysis of this very large uh, patient data set has uh, provided some very helpful information. It has uh, told us that the onset, that PPP is, uh, at the, in terms of the demographic, uh, quite distinct from uh, GPP. Uh, the age of onset is later, uh, typically after 40. Uh, the prevalence of concurrent plaque psoriasis seems to be much lower in PPP than it is in generalized pastoral psoriasis. Uh, the female ratio the male to female ratio is skewed towards female in a much more pronounced way in PPP compared to GPP. Uh, the majority of patients are smokers. Uh, we knew that. Uh, what we've also shown more recently is that smoking, smoking is associated with uh, disease severity. So that the disease presentation is worse in current smoker compare to former smoker and compare to uh, never smoker. So what we have learned so far is that uh, PPP is very distinct from generalized postural psoriasis in terms of its clinical feature, of course, but also in terms of its demographic and in terms of its genetic uh, basis in that mutation of R36RN are very rare. 
And in fact, the exome sequence data that our group has generated also suggests that there's very little evidence at the moment for the involvement of other genes that are related to R36 signaling. And we can't find genes that seem to be, uh, we can't find mutation of large effects that seem to be shared by uh, many affected individuals. And this is strongly suggesting that the genetic architecture of PPP is different, that is not caused by a rare allele of strong effect, but is more likely to be caused by the interaction of multiple genes of moderate effect sites, which interact with triggers such as smoking. And we have recently uh, started a, a genome-wide association study of our uh, PPP dataset to see whether we can find some genetic determinants of the disease uh, in this way. So my final slide is just to acknowledge my group uh, first of all, and then the clinical collaborator without whom uh, none of this data uh, could have been uh, generated and especially Jonathan Barker and Catherine Smith. And finally, of course, all the founders. And thank you for your attention.